In this lesson we're going to describe and talk about the grain information on the uh, incoming grain. So in order to do that let's first of all go into the incoming grain. On the left side you'll see a button for company and grain and then once that's selected on the right side in the middle you see maintain grain data. For our description, our discussion, let's go to the uh, wheat, double click him, and you see what we have for grain information that we maintain. Let's start, start at the top, the grain code, single code for the grain. That can be any, any alpha letter, A through Z, or any number, 0 through 9 or it can even be some of the special characters like plus and minus and uh, in the parentheses but I don't necessarily recommend those. So that gives you some idea of the of the options that you have in terms of the grain code itself. Um, our suggestion is that whatever grain code you decide to use, for instance if it's W like wheat here, you set that same grain, you utilize that same grain code in the outbound and also in the daily position. And uh, in other lessons, we'll show you how to do those things. All right, the description associated with that is a 20 character description, and you can say what you want to in there number, uh, hard red wheat, wheat. Whatever, whatever it suits you. If you, if you want it upper and lower, you make it upper and lower. Whatever you say here is what will appear on reports, on screens, etc. Next, uh, next item is the units that is to be measured in: B for bushels, C for hundred weight, T for tons, and M for metric tons. Enter one of those, and then uh, once uh, you have selected the the units then you tell us what the conversion rate is on what is the number of pounds per unit uh, 60 for wheat uh, 54 for corn and if it's uh, 100 weight you're measuring in you'd put 100 in here. Next item is the storage rate this is expressed in number of dollars per unit per day so for wheat it's how many fractions of a cent per bushel per day do you charge? Um, do you assess on the on the uh, on the storage rate? Now then, uh, if you rather have your storage expressed in uh, dollars or or number of cents per month or something like that, let's say we had five cents per month. What we'd have then is the way to get the number that we actually want the system to have. We'd take five cents, we'd multiply that by 12, and we'd, which would give us a 60. Uh, uh, that would give us the rate per year, and then we'd divide that by 365, and that would give us then what the actual number is for a daily rate. And doing the math to, uh, to get that done, you'd wind up wind up with a daily rate of 0 0.002918. The next item is storage date and in general we suggest that you leave this blank. The only reason you would enter this is if you want your storage to start on a specific date. For instance if you wanted your storage charges to start on October 15th of a certain year. In that case, you could fill it in. Now, in that instance, we would start our storage calculations on that date, regardless of whether the ticket came in prior to that date or after that date. We'd start the storage charges on that date. And uh, we feel like that's just a special situation we, we added that storage date for. But by and large, you are going to want to leave that empty to calculate our storage. What we normally do is we would say we would start storage on the day the ticket, the date, the date that's on the ticket, and charge storage until the date the ticket is sold. We would then subtract from that number of days the number of days of free storage that you assign when we're calculating storage, which could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever the number is that you want to have. Uh, and then we apply this this storage rate that we've calculated to that and it then uh, the the result of all that 
multiplication gives us the total storage charges that we would assign to the ticket. Next field is the deduction description. Uh, some folks will call this uh, assessments, other folks in other, other places call it uh, checkoff dues, whatever you want to call it. That's what this is all about. What you put in here is the description that you want to appear on the various reports when we print them out, especially the settlement. That's really where this comes into use. Uh, you can see in the example that I have here in front of you, it's less uh, one and a half cents per bushel to TWPB, Texas Wheat Producers Board, but that could say assessment if you wanted to, or wheat assessment, or it could be grain tax. Uh, whatever you want it to say is what you put in there. The next field is the rate that will actually be used in the calculation. Um, in this instance, we see we got a 0.15. I really think that probably ought to be a 0.015. Uh, and the deduction method is uh, U says it is one and a half cents per, per bushel. Whereas if you did a P and said it's a percent of the sales price, that, that's the other option that you have. Uh, and if it's percent of sales price, then the deduction rate is the percentage that, that you want to apply to the price or to the sales, to the total sales charge. Um, we only have one of those. I know that there are a few places around the country that need more than one and you'll either have to add them together and put it here or you'll have to use our uh, adjustment field to put the other one in. The auto shrink, no says that you're not going to apply an auto shrink. Yes says apply an auto shrink using the numbers to the right. And an S says that there is a special dock discount. And let me just show you, if you change that to S, you notice how this particular button came to life once we did that. Let's go back and change that to a yes. Then we can get into these fields. Uh, many places, the uh, corn, is, corn is shrunk like this. Uh, they would say, uh, I want to take one and a half percent for every percent over 15. And if that were the case, you'd put 15 in here. The, the rate then would be 1.5 and the type would be percent. As you see, what that would do is automatically calculate when you're entering a ticket, uh, any any moisture for the ticket if the ticket if the moisture on the ticket is greater than 15 percent then we would determine how much it's over 15 percent by apply that times 1.5 and place that into dock number one dock number one um, if you use the special dock discount we can do we can achieve almost any discount uh, schedule, docker discount schedule that you might come up with uh, that you that's based on test weight and moisture. We do that through coding and all we ask you to do is send in the uh, send in the table to us and we'll implement it for you and give you instructions on how to place it into your particular grain that you're dealing with at the time and then those things will happen automatically as every ticket is entered. You can always override what's calculated, but the automated calculation can be there for you. Uh, finally, the items down at the bottom of the uh, screen are can be anything you want to or nothing if you want to leave them blank. Um, if you put something in there, what we will do is we'll try to center it up for you and make it look nice and put it on the bottom of your settlement sheets. All right, with that, I believe I have given you an overview at least of the grain information. Let me, let me add one more item. Until you press save, nothing has really happened. If you just press cancel, everything for this grain will, will have been retained exactly as it, as it was when we entered the screen. Whereas if you press save now, the information that is currently in front of you will be saved and that's what will be used for the grain information for wheat on an, on, 
on a continuing basis after this. Hope this has been uh, a little bit informative to you. Uh, we'll have uh, more videos, or especially will be one that will talk about adding a commodity or a grain to all three of the, uh, the subsystems when you come up and need a new grain added. And we've got a separate video that will take care of that for you. Thanks for, thanks for watching us.